Uh huh. She ain't. Oh, here she comes. Yeah, it's because I'm beside you. She's Whatever, like, eh. she's coming to me. Let's see who she comes to. Oh, Phoebe. Who's she oh, gonna come to? There she comes. Oh, she. Yeah. She laid her ears back and came at you. What? That was. Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and as you can see we're starting on another little dozer project clearing a little bit of land on our property. Not a ton, just mostly doing some cleanup. So as you can see this, I've got about a, a two acre field here that we usually cut hay off of and stuff and basically where we're at, there's my barn right there, the house is right there and just doing some cleanup right here and then along that side of the field there's about, I don't know, four or five acres we're going to kind of clean up that goes from that field edge to the creek. Just a small project, nothing big, doing cleanup mostly. So we can get a little bit more grass to grow in here because eventually I'm gonna put up a hot wire fence I think this summer and just do like a two wire hot wire fence around this field so that we can turn the cows and the donkeys and stuff over here and have more pasture to graze. But uh, the main project isn't even here. It's gonna be a little while before we start on it but the, the dozer company that I'm using is owned by my cousin, Branham Dempsey. It's called Brosh, Brosh Construction, Branham and Josh. And uh, we're doing a little bit of work here, but the main project's gonna be on the new 80 acre off-grid type property that we bought because we're fixing to start working on the pond. That won't be on this video. We're gonna do some work here. I am gonna go over to that property today and move some game cameras around, put some minerals out and different things for the deer. But, uh, We'll do some work here today and uh, maybe over the next two or three days probably get some cleaning done and make things pretty. Okay, so just for reference, he's working on that end of the field. Just kind of give you guys an idea of where we're at and what we're doing here. He's working right there right now. We've got a fence that kind of separates this field because we used to run cows in here and had to keep them away from the creek. So we're gonna take, leave the fence, but we're gonna clean up everything on that side of the fence. You can see where the creek bank is. The creek runs right through there. So there's, I don't know, four or five acres. It's uh, just overgrown and brushy. We're gonna leave all the big mature hardwoods and stuff, but just cleaning it up. So when, it, when we get finished, that side over here will look more like like this side and uh, we'll have more grass for for what we need grass for and less trees less brush just gnarly junky brush in there really and i think it's going to look really cool down there because there's some very very large mature um, walnut trees some big oak trees some big sycamore trees i think it'll be really pretty over there All right, well, <clears throat> I'm gonna let him do his thing and get to work and I'm gonna load up some stuff and head over to the new property. Uh, got some game cameras. I'm gonna start putting out some deer mineral. So, <laughs> it's funny how things work out. Back when we were in Kentucky, when Houston and I were in Kentucky at the National Farm and Machinery Show, we're walking around looking at booths. It's all farm machinery stuff. Tractors and implements and all that stuff. And there's one booth that caught Houston's eye from like halfway across the building. And it was this one. The guys were there with Lucky Buck. So Lucky Buck is a deer mineral company. And we sit there, got to talk to the owner of the company. And the crazy thing is they had emailed me a few weeks before that. So we worked out a deal. We're going to start using some Lucky Buck. So Lucky Buck is a, is a mineral to help deer grow antlers. 
They've got a few other products, some seed blends. One's called the, they've got a product called Freak Factor, which is more of a, a feed uh, attractant. But I've used Lucky Buck, and it just so happens I don't throw away a good bucket. So <laughs> all of my plumbing supplies are in this little box. There's an old Lucky Buck bucket. But I've never really used it consistently the way it was designed. And one thing the owner of the company told me himself was, People use a Lucky Buck like once or twice a year. They'll grab a bucket at Tractor Supply or something and uh, put it out one time. Well, we're trying to grow antlers. The deer just shed their antlers, you know, in the last month or so. And uh, he told me to do this right here. He said, take your lawnmower, put a bucket of Lucky Buck on that lawnmower. And that'll always help you remember when to start putting out deer mineral. He said, the first time you mow the grass is when you need to have deer mineral on the ground. It's greening up as you saw in the video earlier. It's about time to start mowing. Um, I'm not gonna leave that there because I'm fixing to go start putting out some deer, middle, deer mineral now. And uh, anyway, so if, you, if you're trying to raise deer, if you're trying to grow bigger bucks on your property, minerals are a huge, huge, essential, important thing because as soon as that green grass takes off and, every, and the deer are flooded with a ton of new growth. They're eating so much uh, of that grass, it's got a really high water concentration. It's flushing the minerals right out of their body right when the bucks are trying to grow antlers. So I'm gonna load me up a few buckets and uh, go set up some mineral sites on the new property where there has never been any before. Last time you guys saw this spot, this was just nothing but solid brush and trees. And uh, Carl did an excellent job with that forestry mulcher. We've probably got a half acre field right now. And I had him stop. You can kind of see all these big cedar trees. He can get those. It just takes a lot of time. And we're gonna have a bulldozer here in just less than a week or so probably. So once we get the dozer here, I'm gonna have it come in and make this field even bigger, but I wanted Carl just to mulch up all of this little underbrush because the bulldozer can run over a lot of that stuff and then it just stands back up. So a lot of these big cedar trees and stuff, we are gonna go ahead and take out, push this field. We may double it in size and have a one acre food plot back here in the middle of the timber. But look what he found. Uh, I had no idea this was even back here. The owner told me there was an old disc on the property, but I was, I walked all around this area. You could not see this because it was buried in thick brush like this stuff. And as he's mulching, he just drove up on this old disc harrow. And uh, I don't know if it's salvageable or not, but it would be really good to have a big disc implement back here to bust up the ground for a food plot. That might work out just perfectly. And uh, I had him build the road coming in here big enough so that I could get my tractor back here and stuff. So anyways, I'm gonna go off into the timber a little ways, probably over here, and find us a good spot to set this game camera up and dump out this Lucky Buck mineral and uh, see if we can get to uh, getting these deer some minerals that they need to grow some antlers.
All right, well, I got one bucket of Lucky Buck out. Went ahead and brought a bucket of feed and mixed in the Freak Factor with it, maybe like a pound or two. This is just the, the grain that I feed my livestock at home. And got the little Revel Tacticam. So we get a cellular game camera set up with a solar panel. This should be good to go. This alone should be good to go for several months. The mineral on the ground should sustain these deer here for a month or so. They'll come by, eat the mineral. The feed will be gone probably the first week or so, maybe the first couple days if they find it. But the mineral, it's like, I'm telling you, makes me, it, it tastes like, or well, no, I don't know what it tastes like, but it literally smells like apple candy. It smells delicious. I know the deer are going to find it. The pigs will probably find it. Anyways, that should last, that mineral site should last at least a month month and a half maybe a little longer we'll see how many deer are hitting it but having that game camera set up right here facing directly towards the field kind of get to see where the deer are coming and going from look at this old look at this old deer stand that's probably been there for 20 years maybe maybe longer it's all made out of metal uh, there's some boards up top but look at the chain the chain has disappeared it's grown into the tree this is the way people used to build deer stands though homemade stuff so they like a horseshoe and a bracket made you know this is uh, a big big huge spike these kind of things are how deer hunting injuries happen i mean that deer stand's probably been here for 20 25 years and was used you know and it's just dangerous i prefer to hunt out of a ground blind mostly there's actually an old homemade ground blind up here on the hill and I like to put the kids in a ground blind. We can move around. You don't have to be quite as still. I mean, you're pretty exposed sitting there 10 feet off the ground and it's pretty dangerous. So I prefer to hunt on the ground and you can move around. It controls your scent really good. Anyways, a lot of good pluses to hunting on the ground, but I just wonder how many deer have been shot from that deer stand right there? How many memories were made, you know, back 20 years ago? All right, got all my deer mineral out, got my game camera set up. I actually went and put one more bag of corn in this feeder over here. And as soon as I hit the test button to spin that feeder plate a couple times, the deer literally started coming running out of the woods to me. I tried to get a couple clips of them on video, but I don't know if it worked. And I'm telling you what, this place, this place is incredible. It's going to be something special, I have no doubt. I can't wait to get that pond started and see what that's going to look like. I told Houston the other day, if we can get this thing big enough and deep enough, you make a really cool catfish pond. We don't have any catfish in our pond at home. And uh, my brain just goes a thousand miles an hour thinking of all the things we could do either with this cabin, with another cabin, something, I don't know, think about it. If that's like a, like a one and a half to two acre pond when we're done, what if we had a cabin at the pond? Like next level cabin, not shed conversion. I don't know. I'm thinking way down the road. I'm thinking too much. But anyways, I need to get back to the house and check on my dozer work. See if he has any questions. And uh, see where we stand there. Where's Fallon? Oh, you're hiding behind your mama, are you?
Come here, Fallon. Come here. I got a donkey that comes when comes when called by her name. You see that? Hey, Freedom. You gonna be nice today? Hmm. Oh, Fallon will, won't you? You ran right into me. Yes, you did. Come here, Fallon. Fallon. Oh. No, nope, my donkey comes to me. Whatever. You keep that one, I'll keep this one. Fallon, come here. Nope. Don't try to steal her from me. I'm her favorite. No, you're not. Yes, I am. She, you just saw it. You called her filthy. and she came straight to me. She's been rolling in the mud. She has, for sure. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, goodness. Oh, look at you. Where are you going? Huh? Where's you going? Where's you going? Don't you be trying to sneak up behind me. Fallon! Say Fallon! I got it under control. She knows who she likes. Whatever. Watch here. I'll come over here by you. And then she'll come to me, okay? You ready? We'll see. Alright. Fallon! Come here. Uh-huh. She ain't. Oh, here she comes. Yeah, it's because I'm beside you. She's Whatever. like, eh. Whatever, she's coming to me. Let's see who she comes to. Oh, Phoebe. Who's she going to come to? Oh, there she comes. Oh, she, yeah. she laid her ears back and came at you. That Whatever. Was, that was aggression. <laughs> no, That's what that wasn't. was. No, it wasn't. <clears throat> hey, girls. What do you think? Hey, Freedom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Am I in your way? Huh? She doesn't understand personal no, space. She don't. <laughs> what is it? Huh? Well, as you can see, we got quite a bit of work done today. The dozer operator has already gone home for the day. Got this whole area cleaned up. We weren't able to get over towards the creek. I didn't get any, hardly any footage of him working today. Had too many other things going on. But I had him come in and we're cleaning up this far side of the field. So you can see there's kind of a brush pile right there. The one right there. I'll drive down there and kind of show it to you. Just kind of cleaning up that field edge. Just mostly because so much of that that field edge is just encroached over into the field for years and I don't know cleaning things up a little bit about a day and a half of work on this side but this this spot's what I'm most excited about so I guess we'll see you guys in the morning
definitely making some progress on this side. It looks a lot different. Um, definitely going to have some brush piles to burn, but you can see once all this gets cleaned up, we'll bring the tractor in with the landscape rake and smooth all this out and kind of level it out so that it's not so rough and uh, get some grass seed planted in here. This will look really good under here, Houston. Yeah. So here's kind of what the after that we're going after. Here's the before. I mean, a lot of our property is, is brush and timber like this. And we're just taking out a lot of the little small stuff that we don't want. Look at leaving these big giant uh, walnut trees. That one over there is a pecan. There's a lot of oak. But look at the size of some of these trees in here. I mean, they're just, that is a massive walnut tree right there. And uh, we're not trying to make a hay field out of this or anything. Just wanting to cleaned up where we can maintain it and make it look pretty, right? Yep. I would say he's probably got another full day of work in this area. This is Friday, so they're probably not gonna be here tomorrow. But he's probably, I don't know, two thirds of the way through this area. He's just kind of cleaning up this side, smoothing it out and uh, making sure these brush piles are piled up so that we can eventually burn them. There's a lot of dead trees in it. A lot of the dead stuff on the ground. Some, some, some of the trees were standing dead, but there's still a lot of green there. So it'll take a little while before these brush piles will burn. But we're making progress and it looks amazing. What do you think? It looks really good. Make a really good little deer hunting spot back here on the creek, huh? Yeah. Like this right here. So we're basically cleaning up everything all the way to the creek edge. It's like a cliff over here. So there's another, I don't know if I've ever shown you guys that much. There's another dam like our waterfall where our swimming hole is. You can tell the way that one was built. At one point in time, the water went across the middle there. They built it high on both sides, but over the years it eroded around it. So now it just goes around that one. But uh, still got a lot of cleaning to do, but it's starting to look better. I like it. So there's what it's gonna look like eventually. Got a lot more work to do. You gotta burn these brush piles and obviously he's gotta finish up. But uh, anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day and as always, we'll see you on the next video.